In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin as we recollect ourselves. We just quieten our minds. Make that decision to to renounce everything that is distracting us, everything that is taking us away from this moment. Just become aware that we are in the presence of our God. want to be present now so we do we have to renounce all the, all the things and the people activities of my life all this every little thing that is trying to take my attention my focus if I if this time is to bear fruit, I need to be recollected. I need to be completely engaged in that one thing that will give me life. So I need to connect to that life I need to to go through that door is the narrow door it's the more most more difficult door rather than going through the wide door which many go and Many take. But for us, we are making this effort to go a different path. Jesus said, you know the way to where I am going. Lord, we don't know the way. said Thomas Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the Father except through me no one can come to to peace No one can come home to safety and security. No one can come to true freedom. It 
except through me. I am the door. Says the Lord. So if we want to find this freedom, we have to renounce everything else. Just ask ourselves, what door am I going through this morning? Am I going to remain in this world? Am I going to continue to carry the weight of this world and its troubles and problems and its weight? must go through that door, the narrow door. So I open that door to which is to become aware that he is here, my God. My God is is present. I am not alone. He is here and I am here. Just wish to be here at this moment now. Jesus said, when you want to pray, enter your room and close the door and pray to your father who is there waiting for you. Your father who is present in that secret place. Listen to you. You have nowhere else to go but to him who is life. To him who has come to us. To him who is closer to us now than we are to ourselves. This is how present our God is. Just come to that awareness of his concern and affection for us. He is, he desires to be close to us. He desires to reveal himself 
to speak to us. But today we must listen to his voice. We must allow that voice to speak in, in our hearts to, to have its way with us. We must surrender to that word, that word of truth, the word of life, the word that frees and delivers. A power filled word. The word that satisfies and nourishes. Yes, just desire it is a desire of our Father who wants to care for his child that he has ultimately created and brought into this world. It is the desire of a father who who watches over its child to protect it, to provide for all its needs. It is the, the desire of a father to guide to one who has a plan for my life. Who wants to lead me by the hand, who wants to show me the way to life. Who wants to be my father. This is what a father does. A father protects, a father looks after all my needs. A father allows me to be, to be myself. A father is a place of, of love and comfort. Father only desires to show his love for his child, to lavish that love. It, its only effort is to, to love. He finds happiness when the child experiences his embrace. He wants the child to be safe, to feel that safety. simply because it is his child and he is father. He's not just like any earthly father, 
we have a perfect father. Father who is absolute in his love and affection. A father who cannot but love his child. Who only wants what is the best. Father who provides for all my needs. Be aware of this care. It's, it is the Good Shepherd. This, this revelation of this love is in the one who lays down his life for his sheep. This is really the. No, we might. Oh, that's. Is this in just an image? You know, we read about the good shepherd, in the Psalms, and Jesus said, "I am the good shepherd." But in truth, Jesus is expressing that the essential part of his nature. He really, shepherd is the image of a father, it is. The very nature of God is like it, the good shepherd. And so let us understand it. When we are lost, as the sheep are lost, even if there was 99 sheep left, he would leave the sheep 99 and go in search of the lost one. This is how important we are to him. It's a crazy thing to do to leave 99 sheep alone. And yet, this is what my father is willing to do. He's, he would leave them all for me. It's like as if he's incomplete until just as long as I'm not back safe in his arms, he, he is incomplete, he is unfulfilled. So he will always seek out the lost. So maybe we feel that this morning that we are lost maybe in sin in our guilt, we are hiding. It's what sin does, it, it creates fear in us. We are, we feel alone. We've lost that security.
And so the father who is aware of how we are Indeed, he, he suffers in himself in that way. He's, that sadness of God is, is a longing love to, to restore what was lost. As long as I'm away from my place of security, as long as I am out of his arms, he is he's not content until he picks me up. Love will always pursue the child. Where is my son? Where is my daughter? And think of a father if he's in a park and all the kids are playing or a mother and suddenly she just for that moment she can't see her child and she looks around and, and the longer she can't see him the more concerned she is <clears throat> she panics even <clears throat> she vigorously goes in search of that child because it's her child. No matter how bold they were, maybe they were they were told ten times not to not to leave that area or not to do that. And yet the child disobeyed its parent but it will never stop the mother or father from looking for that child. That's th that's the mercy of our God. That's that's the heart of our heavenly Father. He wants us to come back and to do the right thing. This is the, the desire of the divine love, the divine mercy. It always seeks to find and to, to restore no matter how many times we've fallen. Joyfully took that sheep and laid it on its shoulders and brought it back to the flock. Let's just stop and we have to have this encounter, this experience of our God, the living God. Let the Good Shepherd find us. Do you feel that safety now? Let us rest in the arms. Of our Father.
just reflecting on this morning and indeed every morning. The, um, you know, the experience that we are. We the, the, the human person needs. Is essentially it's it's salvation. What's happening every time I open my heart, every time I experience that gift of 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 love and it is a, a moment of salvation where i'm being freed and i'm i'm being restored to myself it's like i'm becoming safe again i'm becoming who i am at the, the child of my father and you know, that's why we need Jesus. Jesus saves. I go to Jesus and I allow him to save me. I allow him to literally to pick me up and put me on his shoulders. And that's when I just, you know, especially in, in terms of, 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 of forgiveness of sin, that's why you know, we have the sacraments is this is where we can come and we're we're sorrowful and we're contrite and we we. We take ownership of our of our faults and failings. And we do this every morning, you know, we. We have to come to the one who can free us. There's only one who can take away our sins. And you know, we are slaves to the sin. We'll always be till we die, essentially. You know, we'll we need to be we need this redemption. We need someone to pay the price for us. This is, you know. What it means that when we say Jesus saves us, you know, we say it so easily at times, or but really to experience this, and this is why we have to come to this awareness. You know, I was I was down in Thurles last week in Ireland for we had our assembly, and you know, every morning we gather before the first talk, our first meetings, and we'd pray our our community prayers. And then we'd pray our bravery, our office. Morning prayers. And I really, I, in truth, in honesty, I, I really struggled because I wasn't used to how fast the words came out. It was just. It was like, you know, it was like. A race. And some fella took off, he led the prayers, you know, and we all responded and we he said something, we said something, he said something, we said something. And I just couldn't. I was like painful. For the most part, because I wasn't used to when I'm in England, even when I pray with Father Paul here, we're much slower. We take our time, which I take for granted, probably because it gives me space to just absorb that word of God, the scriptures and can just there's space and time to just reflect on what I'm saying. And just to open myself to that word of truth. And that's where the salvation gets in, you know, it, it's that space between the words and the silence that God speaks. To my heart. And I open up to that, you know, just to recognize, you know, I need to feel my guilt, but I need to, I need time to, to recognize that there is someone who can who has paid the price for that sin. The 
Because if I don't have that time, I'll still remain in bondage. I'll still be a slave to to Satan, to the enemy, to to the evil. I have to become aware that I'm of that freedom. It's, it's the real danger of false religiosity that just fills up those t- spaces with prayer and it's not even it's not prayer it's saying words that happen to be scriptures but there's nothing happening on my spiritual level it's all psychophysical so it's all just in my head which is sad really you know that we can think that we're and then you just you start thinking you're about just keeping God happy and you know anyway that's even this morning recognize the difference maybe say sorry to Jesus forgive me Jesus for all that's false in my prayer my half-hearted efforts to please you or I don't know what I'm doing most of the time, to be honest. Forgive me for closing the door. For not praying from my heart, as Our Lady invites us to do, all those Hail Marys and Holy Marys. And it's so dangerous to get into, it's a real bad habit to just pray for the sake of praying. You know, if I I just, I'll continue. This is the, the stark reality is that I will continue to carry the burden of that sin, that guilt. I'll continue to you know, the Lord wants to take everything from me. But if I don't give him time to do that, to make this fundamental choice to to leave that sin, to hand it over, to accept that gaze of love, to allow him to look at me and love me and to embrace that child that needs the time you see what needs to happen, friends. That's where the healing is. To the extent that I let him love me is the extent that I will experience ultimately my salvation. How do you know that you're forgiven or how do you know that you've prayed properly? Well, you, you, feel, you feel it, you, you, you experience that freedom, you, you're, you feel that safety. There's peace ultimately. There's no more questions, no more efforts are needed. I'm drinking from the well, but it's it's effortless. Everything that was lost through my sin has been restored. He, he I've been sa- he's paid the price. I'm no longer a slave to my sin and my fears. I am a child in my father's arms. Can you imagine that child in the playground if he if he be, if he'd lost his daddy or his mammy? He'd go hysterical. 
He'd scream out, terrified. It's, it was it'd be a terrible trauma for him to think that his his daddy was gone or something. My God. So we need to to experience that. He, he, he sees us and he comes to us and he picks us up. And all those fears lose their power over us. We can rest again We're, as we feel that safety. It's, there is nothing more that is needed. We have to make this decision, you know, this is that peace is the peace of the Holy Spirit. That's why we decide for Jesus, you know, to, to, to trust in him again. It's all about faith. About believing. To decide for Jesus. To go through this door of faith. We've been trying to go through it this morning. You know, he, he, he has given us this freedom, but I have to decide. I have the freedom to decide. I can either remain a slave or I can go through that door. It's the narrow door. I can follow him into freedom lord we don't know where you're going how can we know the way to your to the father i am the way follow me i am the truth i am the life so without this basic decision to just go this way and accept I, I really want change. I really want open myself to the, the strength of that spirit. I won't feel safe because I continue to think that I have to live by myself, alone in the park, afraid, lost. I continue to feel guilty. I just fall and I'll fall back into the same sins and I can go to confession even I can pray all day so that's you know we talk about conversion and all of that this is what's what it is it's turning from this false religiosity Turning from everything, everything earthly, turning from my guilt. I have to make this radical decision just to believe ultimately I am trusting in Jesus. Many times we've said it and yet how few times we actually really consciously decide for Jesus. It's, it's a decision ultimately to accept everything he did. It's to accept my redemption too. And just enter the kingdom ultimately that has been won for us
So we're going to pray. We're just going to read the today's gospel. And maybe as you read it, it may be in the light of our morning because, you know, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's speaking about their virtue. It's about how they live ultimately. And, you know, we're all called to the commandments were there in the Old Testament. But it's like Jesus is bringing his disciples to a whole new level of of intensity in terms of living the commandments. It's, you know, we have to love at a whole new level. And, and this is what we're trying to do every morning. We're, we're opening up to a, a whole new experience, a depth of, of, of living in love. But if we're going to love at that level, we have to experience first that love. If that can make sense. If I'm, if I'm going to live the, live the Beatitudes, if I'm going to live at this intensity of love, which is impossible at a human level, well, then I need to have that. It is the love of the Holy Spirit. I need to surrender to that gift of salvation. And then I'm capable of, of living as, as Jesus is inviting us to. So it's in the light of that we'll, we'll just read our, our gospel now. It's still from the, the Sermon on the Mount where the Lord has just given the Beatitudes and now he continues. He said to his disciples, I tell you, if your virtue goes no deeper than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. You've learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must not kill, and if anyone does kill, he must answer for it before the court. But I say this to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. You've learned how it was said, you must not commit adultery. But I say this to you, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must not break your oath, but must fulfill your oaths to the Lord. But I say this to you, do not swear at all. All you need say is yes, if you mean yes, no, if you mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, 
if your virtue goes no deeper than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. We have learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must not kill. And if anyone does kill, he must answer it before the court. But I say this to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. We have learned how it was said, you must not commit adultery. But I say this to you, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must, you must not break your oath, but must fulfill your oaths to the Lord. But I say this to you, do not swear at all. All you need say is yes if you mean yes, no if you mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. 